Apple is about to make perhaps the wildest move that they have ever made to the MacBook Pro to completely revolutionize the laptop as we know it. And they have a master plan on how to do this and we are the ones who will benefit from it. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the future of the MacBook Pro based on what Apple has already been doing, as well as some crazy leaks, rumors, and recent patent filings, which show that Apple is about to make everyone happy all at once. So before I get into the leaks and all of that good stuff, I want to quickly cover what Apple has already been doing with their Mac lineup that's been getting a lot of people excited. Back in November, Apple revealed the very first Apple Silicon chip for the Mac, which is of course the M1 chip. And despite the fact that they didn't change anything else about the three Macs that received the M1 chip, people have been buying them up left and right because they're much more powerful and reliable while using less power and being more silent. Apple did this by essentially taking the more simple chip technology from their iPhone and iPads and scaling it up into a Mac computer chip which makes it much more efficient than competing processors from Intel and AMD, which use the totally different x86 architecture, which has been around for ages. Because of that, Apple has a massive advantage, especially in the laptop space, since that's where efficiency matters most and Intel and AMD are many months, if not years behind in terms of transitioning into this type of chip technology. And even if they do catch up, there's the problem of their new ARM-based chips taking advantage of the actual computer software or even working at all. And that's a big problem because most laptops use Windows software that's fully controlled by Microsoft. And then there's also the aspect of the laptop manufacturer who actually makes the laptop, which ends up utilizing both the chip and the software. But lucky for Apple, they now literally control everything from the chip, the software, and the laptop itself. So they have a huge advantage compared to their competitors. And to make it even better, they've been slowly preparing for this Apple Silicon chip transition for a few years now. Like back in 2018, when Apple killed 32-bit apps in macOS. They did this because they needed all of the traditional x86 apps to be 64-bit, so that in the future, they could use their Rosetta 2 translation software to convert them into apps that support Apple Silicon. And that is why the new M1 Macs work so incredibly well. So the point of this is that Apple is way ahead of their competitors and they're only just getting started. The current M1 chip packs an eight core processor and eight core graphics. And we've been seeing rumors of Apple designing MacBook Pro chips with up to 20 processor cores and 32 graphics cores, which is absolutely insane if you consider how powerful the M1 chip already is with its limited amount of cores. But for the time being, the next Apple Silicon chip that we're expecting is the M1X chip for the new 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros, which are rumored to be coming this summer in quarter three of 2021 and they should be getting at least 12 processor cores and 16 graphics cores. And we think that it's gonna be so powerful that it's gonna outperform Apple's 12 core Mac Pro in terms of multi-core performance, and it's gonna match up to the latest 5300M graphics chip in the 16-inch MacBook Pro. So yeah, the future is extremely bright for the MacBook Pro in terms of the chip technology and the software, but I still haven't gotten into the major changes that Apple is making to the MacBook Pro to help it consume the laptop market, so let's get right into it. Ever since the 2016 redesign of the MacBook Pro, people have been complaining about a lot of weird changes that Apple made, like removing the beloved MagSafe charging system and the switch to solely having USB-C ports, forcing users to buy dongles. And for the past five years, Apple has refused to budge on any of the complaints from their users. But now, leaks and rumors are pointing to Apple finally having a massive change of heart, basically going all out and far beyond what we expected for the next MacBook Pros coming this summer, so let's dig into it. We've recently been seeing a bunch of rumors that Apple is gonna completely redesign the MacBook Pro, flattening out the sides and the back, 
just like they did on the iPhone, the iPad, and the recent Pro Display XDR. So it totally makes sense for them to bring this modern looking design over to the MacBook Pro as well. And they're not stopping at just the redesign. They're taking this opportunity to literally fix basically every complaint that people had to make the best MacBook Pro of all time. For example, we've seen many leaks about Apple replacing the current LCD display that many people are getting tired of with a brand new mini LED display, which is supposed to mimic a great looking OLED display, but without all of the drawbacks. What's great about this is that mini LED, what's oh, great, What's great about this is that mini LED displays are very thin, which will allow them to more easily upgrade the outdated 720p webcam, which is something people have complained about for years. Another thing a lot of people have refused to accept is the touch bar, a touchscreen display which replaces the top row of function keys on MacBook Pros. And now, rumors are pointing to Apple finally ditching it and going back to regular function keys. And way back in 2016, Apple completely removed the magnetic MagSafe charging system and forced users to charge using one of the USB-C ports, and a lot of people were upset. And now, it looks like they're bringing back MagSafe, which came as a complete shock to me, but I'm personally very excited because my son just recently started walking and he's already tripped over my MacBook's charging cable a couple of times and MagSafe would prevent this from happening. And on top of that, Mark Gurman says that the switch back to MagSafe will allow for faster charging speeds as well, which is always nice. Digging even deeper, the most significant change that will impact the most people is the likelihood that Apple is bringing back some of the most common ports that they previously removed five years ago. Just yesterday, ming Chi Kuo reported that Apple is not only bringing the SD card slot back to the MacBook Pro, but also a physical HDMI port, which I was not expecting at all. So essentially, the new MacBooks later this year will be coming with four USB 4 ports, a headphone jack, an SD card slot, a full HDMI port, and possibly a USB-A port as well. This is gonna be a huge deal for a lot of people since they will no longer have to use a bunch of dongles or adapters anymore. So you might be asking, why in the world did Apple wait five years to finally fix all of those issues? Even going as far as to bring back a bunch of the ports that Apple previously said were outdated, basically showing that Apple was wrong. Well, I believe that Apple has a master plan to take back a huge chunk of the laptop market and get their users to finally trust them again. And the way they're gonna do this is by fixing as many complaints from their users as possible to make every single customer happy and willing to finally upgrade to a new MacBook Pro. And instead of slowly doing this over the span of a few years like they usually do, they're gonna unleash everything all at once and essentially create the best MacBook Pro or perhaps the best laptop ever made. ming Chi Kuo said that these practical changes to the ports, specs, and design will boost MacBook shipments by 25 to 30% compared to last year, which was already a great year for Mac sales. If you think about it, the new MacBook Pro will not only fix all of those issues and complaints that I mentioned, but they will also get a huge bump in performance, battery life, and reliability compared to previous models. So I personally think that these 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros are gonna be so good that they're gonna be sold out for months and they're gonna trigger a revolution, forcing other laptop makers to switch to using ARM-based laptop chips. But because of Apple's head start with their Apple Silicon chips, I think there's actually a pretty good chance that MacBooks will be the best selling laptops over the next couple of years, partly due to the huge wave of buyers of these M1X MacBook Pros, but also all of the other big features that we're expecting for the future, so let's get right into those. Programmers have found code within macOS Big Sur pointing to Face ID finally coming to the Mac, 
but I'm really not sure if it's going to be coming later this year or potentially next year. On top of that, Apple has been researching using titanium instead of aluminum for their MacBook Pros to give them a more durable finish. So we could be seeing that within the next couple of years. Apple has also been rumored to be working on dedicated graphics chips for the Mac, specifically for the iMac, but I'm almost 100% sure that Apple will be bringing that to the MacBook Pro as well, but I'm not sure when that's gonna happen. Another interesting leak came in the form of a patent, which shows that Apple is considering having a small display on each and every single key on the keyboard, which will make changing languages for different regions incredibly simple for Apple, and it's gonna allow you to view shortcuts much more easily. And finally, there have been patents that Apple filed for showing some sort of smart connector or wireless charging pads coming to MacBooks, which would allow you to connect and charge other Apple devices, so it's gonna be interesting to see how Apple is gonna pull that off. So those are all the changes that we should be expecting for the future of the MacBook Pro, but I think that the M1X 14-inch and 16-inch models coming this summer are gonna totally blow a lot of people's minds and they're gonna be incredibly popular. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and tap the like button below and click the circle above to subscribe so you don't miss out on when we finally get these MacBooks into our hands. And if you disagree with any of my viewpoints in this video, go ahead and comment down below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.